Hi guys, this is Nick Barrett, the Snooker Gym Franchise Premises in Islamabad, Pakistan, run by my good friend Arshad Qureshi. We're here with uh, Waheed today, very pleased to meet you. Thank you. And I just wanted to talk you through Waheed's small collection of cues, but they're really interesting and very nice quality as well. So I'll show you a manufacturer that you probably haven't seen before, but before we do, how long have you been playing snooker? How long have you been playing snooker? Three, three years. Three years? Three only. years, yeah. So what's your best break so far? Uh, 52. 52, that's pretty good. Yeah. And the, uh, you've had a small break from the game now and hoping to get back in to practice. Because of his back pain, yeah, he did have a problem. Okay. Kamar ke dar ke se, could break aage na. Okay, good. So I wish you all the best with uh, Arshad's coaching. So let's have a look at the cues. So the first one is Master Q, lovely design here. And so well done with these peaks to be at such consistent heights. Very really nicely finished. And lovely straight grain with the chevrons toward the tip. And then we've got a selection of cases. This is a master case. This is Woods Q's what he is it? And collection of extensions, tip protector. Mm, that looks this nice. Is, this is from MKR, which is a Pakistani brand, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And look at the design of this here. one. Like this is also MKR. MKR, which is from where? Where are they made? In, in Karachi. Karachi. Yeah, and they're a good friend of mine as well, and his as well. Actually, I'm using their queue as well. Oh. Mine is MKR as well. They're, they're doing a good job. Yeah. And it's nicely made. Yeah. And look at the workmanship here, how, mu how much time that must have taken to do all those veneers. Yeah, yeah. Lovely piece of workmanship. And then we've got the 1970s design Q case. Yeah. Which you can sleep in, probably as you said, if we're thin enough. You probably skinned a cat and took all the fur off her. <laughs> That's not very kind, well, is it? <laughs> Just a guess. But then there's this one which is lovely piece of timber. Look how straight those yeah. grains are. And what, what the purists look for is, okay, first of all, sharp, um, sharp chevrons, consistently placed chevrons down toward the tip. They're lovely. But also on the, un on the side, they, the purists want these side grains pointing as straight as possible toward the tip. Yeah, that's and what we were talking about that day, about the quality of wh cube. Whether it actually makes any difference at all is another matter entirely. That's another story, uh, yeah. the, the purists like it, so the yeah. manufacturers need to go with what the purists demand. Right. Okay, right. but on the underside, what the purists demand is, have a look here, the a flat piece of, or an open piece of grain, yeah. so that it runs smoothly on the bridge hand. It closes a little bit there, but a lot of cues have a lot of dark grain, a lot of these neg uh, negative chevrons on the underside of the queue, yeah. which can wear out over time. Yeah. Now this is an interesting John Paris. You can see the colour is a little bit darker on the shaft. Yeah. A lot more chevrons on this one, if you have a look, have a look down the chevrons there, there are quite a few more on this queue. And yeah, I think he asked for it. Did you ask for these arrows? Kitne apne arrows apni marzi se mange the? Kitne hone chahiye? Yeah, he maximum. asked for these arrows. He said maximum, maximum he could get. Okay. Uh, so it was his then, because he yeah. liked having okay. the. Okay. Now, if you have a lot of arrows, yeah. chevrons, peaks chevrons, yeah. on the top. I'm inspired by George Armstrong. George Armstrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Arrows. So if you have a lot of peaks on the top, and and this, you know, this goes to show that Judd Trump likes lots of peaks, the yeah. purists like seven peaks, I've got to have seven peaks otherwise yeah. I can't yeah, play I can't with it. Play. Yeah. <laughs> but on the underside look, lots of peaks on the top, you'll get these uh, negative chevrons on the underside of the queue. Yeah. And they can wear out and, and you can feel those rubbing on the bridge hand a little bit. It's not after, it's not, well, after quite a while, I think. It's not a deal breaker, but yeah. what's really interesting here that what he has made himself. When did you make this? Look, have a look at this. Yeah. 
This is just exquisite. Actually, which club? Look. Uh, in a club which he plays has a floor, wooden floor. Oh. So usually they were damaging their cues. Right. So they thought of, they right. came up with the idea. All right, let's protect it. And this is one reason not to have a hard floor. If if anyone is thinking of opening a club or reflooring their club or getting a table at home, don't get a hard floor. It sounds terrible. The balls knock and roll all yeah. over the place. Right. The balls get more damaged. It's not comfortable on the feet. It's noisy, and it can. Um, hammer the uh, end of the cues as well. Right. So then moving up toward the bulk end. So let's look at this one last because this is again a pair of MKRs from yeah. Kadachi. Yeah. This is getting into a Stephen Hendry vibe here, isn't it? With the yes. Stephen Hendry type. Stephen Hendry. Did you ask them to make it to yes. the Stephen Hendry? Yes, yes. Pattern, okay. It's a copy so of the cues. Cues, Both of cues are the same style. Yeah. Same shape. So that's got a number of, I like this, I personally love this boat design, the boat um, chevron. So you can see there that it goes from a positive to a negative chevron. It's an enclosed piece of grain, which looks like a boat. Yeah. And I pers this is on the underside of the queue. You can see the chevrons go toward the tip here. Because it like And on the underside of the queue, if you come back, the chevrons are pointing the other way. Yeah. I personally love to have a boat. In fact, I may have a go this year at looking for a, a, a queue with a boat grain on it, because I love it. Right. Uh, a hero of mine as a kid, Frank Desi from London area, Slough area, right. he had a queue with a boat on, but then he cut it in half and demolished it. So oh. I was devastated, because I love playing. I was hoping that now I could maybe buy we, it off Maybe him. we can get you one from MKR. Maybe, we can get him maybe. a queue, yeah? Maybe, the one but, you're looking um, for. Yeah. Finally, let's have a look at this one. Because this is the same design, lovely piece. What do you know what timber that is? Uh, this wood is Shisham Kwam Rosewood, Kwam is it? Yeah, Rosewood. Yeah. Rosewood. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm not sure about Maple that. shaft. And these feel a little bit different, these maple shafts. That's got flush tips. Some players like to have a mushroom tip that's overhanging the ferrule. The danger of that is if you get a miscue yeah. or play too many power shots, the tips can break because can break, yeah. effectively the ferrule, don't want to see that horrible looking plaster, do we? Uh, the ferrule acts as a blade yeah. cutting the tip from underneath as it hits the cue ball. But these, so let me just play a shot with both these. So that's all right. So that's a similar weight as well. You ask them to be the same weight? Yes. Yeah, okay. So let's play on the V6. See if it sounds different. Yeah, slightly different, but it's got that classic maple feel, which is. It just feels as though it has a little bit more give in it, and it's. Yes, exactly. That's a very good word, yeah. I also love pear wood shafts, which is oh, so yeah. rare. Much darker version of maple. Oh, uh, right. But they're, they're beautiful cues. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, some Mannox or cues of that era had pear wood. Right. Uh, some of the old billiards cues. But it's a lovely feel, maple. I just always personally preferred the the ash. And what about you? Do you prefer the maple or the ash? I like uh, playing with Ashwood. Yeah, it's the. Uh, I see it's, uh, There's no arrows in it, and he uses to them. Black. I have not maple cue. But so you like the arrows. Yeah. Too. Yes. He just wanted to try a maple cue. That's why yeah. he asked him to make so, it. So here's a question: How do you decide which cue to use when you're going to the club? <laughs> Good question. आप किस तरह फैसला करते हैं कि जब क्लब में जाएं तो किस क्यूज को लेके जाना है किसे खेलना इट्स अ वेरी डिफरेंट प्रोसेस या एनी क्यूज उर्दू में बता जो क्यू में मुझे नजदीक नजर आता है मेरी अलमारी में जहां आप इट सेज व्हाट एवर अ फाइन क्लोजर आई विल जस्ट टेक इट आउट एंड गो एंड प्ले दैट्स अ शुड बी दिस वन या व्हिच इज द नियरेस्ट वन या अम बट yeah, the answer should be one cue, yeah, but, one cue yeah, only. Yeah, but he's not playing actually quite often. That must be the reason. So he's just yeah. going for there for yeah. one hour. He doesn't even sometimes play. He just sit there with his cue and come back. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He's, he's a...
Very good lad. Okay, well, thanks a lot for showing us your collection, Wade. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. So that the difference in height that I played there was probably only two millimetres or so. This is the Snooker Gym Player of the Year for 100 ranked players. You come to a stop in a controlled way and begin the delivery in a controlled way as well.